three types of probability. Um, classical, empirical, and subjective. The first type we're going to talk about is classical. Classical, also known as theoretical probability, is used when each outcome in a sample space is equally likely to occur. Equally likely to occur. Meaning I'm just as likely to get a heads as I am a tails when I flip a coin. Okay, there's an equal chance for outcomes. So how do I calculate this? We use P of E, and the way I read this is the probability of event E is equal to <clears throat> the number of outcomes in event E divided by the number of outcomes in the sample space. Okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me, an example of theoretical or classical probability, say we take a six-sided die and I wanna find the probability of each event. The first thing I like to do when I have this type of problem is I like to write out the sample space. For a six-sided die, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six are the possible scenarios. So the probability of event A, that's P of A, is equal to, well, what is event A? That's we roll a four. How many ways can I roll a four? There's only one four, there's one way to roll a four. How many ways total can I roll a coin? Six total, so the probability is one out of six, which if you want it in decimal four is like 0.167 approximately, okay? So it's not impossible, but it might be unlikely for you to guess um, what the uh, die is gonna land on, okay? Can you do it? Sure. Is it likely? Not likely. Event B, find the probability of event B. Rolling a nine. How can I roll a nine if I have digits that are one through six? It is impossible to roll a nine. There are zero nines in my sample space. So zero out of how many total? Six, which means that there's no chance it's impossible. Okay, impossible to roll a nine. Now event C, to find the probability of event C, roll a number that's less than five. Numbers that are less than five are one, two, three, and four. So how many total numbers is that? That's four digits that are less than five. So four total ways to roll a number less than five out of six total, which reduces to two thirds or um, 60 or 0.667, okay, which is about 66, 67%, okay? Now, two thirds, that means two out of three times you get a number that's less than five. So that's more than like, that's more than unlikely, that's likely to occur. Okay, so if you roll a, roll a die, then you're likely to get a number that's less than five. If you're looking to roll a four, that's unlikely to get exactly a four, okay? Now, the probability of rolling a number greater than zero, what numbers are greater than zero? Well, one is greater, two, three, four, five, and six. Everything is greater. So how many ways can I roll a number greater than zero? There's six ways to roll a number greater than zero. Out of six total gives me one. Now, one is another way to say 100%, right? So this is a certain event. It's certain that you're gonna roll a number that's greater than zero if these are your options, okay? So for any event E, for any event E, the probability of E is stuck between two numbers, okay? What's the lowest your probability can be? Well, it could be an impossible event with a probability of zero. 
And what is the biggest your probability can be? Well, it can be a certain event where it's guaranteed to happen, which is equal to one, okay? So for any event E, your probability is between zero and one inclusive. Now what that means is if you do the math and say you find the probability of your event and you get like 1.2, you know that that answer is impossible because you cannot be 120% sure something's gonna happen. You can be 100% sure, which is certainty, okay? Very few things in life are certain, death and taxes pretty much, right? Or you can be 0% sure, meaning there's no chance at all it's gonna happen. But you cannot be negative, you cannot have a negative probability, and you cannot have a probability greater than one, okay? So those are your lower, lower and upper bounds for any probability question you run into. The next type of probability is empirical. Empirical, this is where people make the big bucks, also known as statistical probability. This is based on observations obtained from probability experiments. Okay, they can be used when the outcomes are not equally likely. Most times in life, outcomes are not equally likely. You are not as likely to get struck by lightning as you are to not get struck by lightning, right? So you're much more likely to never get struck by lightning. You got like a 99.9% .9 chance of never getting struck versus that 0.1% chance of the people who do get struck by lightning, right? So you're a lot more likely to never be struck by lightning than you are to get hit by a lightning bolt, okay? So not all events are equally likely, all right? So statistical probability, empirical probability relies off of frequencies. So the probability of an event E occurring is the frequency of the event E divided by the total frequency. So maybe, you know, how in the world did I get this percentage, right? Maybe, you know, they went out and they asked a thousand people, all right, have you ever been struck by lightning, right? So total frequency in was a thousand. And then one person comes back and says, hey, yeah, I got hit by lightning. So one out of a thousand people got hit by lightning. So uh, what is that? That's uh, one over a thousand which is 0 0.001, and if I move the decimal over two times, that gives me 0.1%, okay? So that's the idea there. So to get this, I take the frequency divided by the total in, okay? So let's do an example here. So New York City Commute Survey randomly selects 1,000 adults and we want to know what the probability that the next person we run into and we ask, you know, what's the probability that they commute by walking? So 552 do public transportation, right? 301 have a private car. 33 use a taxi. 97 are walkers and 17 ride a bike, okay? So what's the probability that the next person surveyed computes by walking? So let's call W walking, all right? So the probability that you commute by walking is equal to, well, how many walkers there are? So we observed um, 97 out of how many total? Well, what do I do? I take 552 plus 301 plus 33 plus 97 plus 17. So 552 plus 301 plus 33 plus 97 plus 17, and that should add up to 1,000, okay? 
And so when you do this, you're going to get a decimal of uh, 0 0.097. Now, that's the decimal form. If, if, if the homework asked you to put it in percent form, you would move the decimal over twice and you put 9.7, type that in as your answer, and then you'd have the percent there, okay? But if it just has the decimal form, then this is my answer right there, okay? Answers that will not be accepted would be if you put like 0.097%. That does not equal this right here, okay? So don't do that. I see some people do that, don't do that. All right. The law of large numbers. As an experiment is repeated over and over, the empirical probability approaches the classical probability. This law of large numbers is what links the two together. The classroom setting of the theoretical, here's what should happen, versus the application in the real world where math is used in the real world through statistics we observe okay this many people get sick by the virus out of this many people total therefore it's like a five percent infection rate or whatever okay so um it's actually observed and if you repeat the experiment over and over with larger and larger groups the bigger the more times that it repeats over and over, it approaches the true classical probability. And the way I think about this is think of flipping a coin. Say I flipped a coin um, theoretically, theoretically, I know that the probability of getting a heads is 50%, one out of two, right? There's only one way to get a heads and there's two things that can happen. But if I flip a coin four times, all right, so flip coin four times, maybe I get three heads, then that gives me a 75% chance of getting heads. But say I flip the coin 40 times, now all of a sudden I get maybe um, 25 heads. Okay, and so what is that? That's 25 out of 40. 25 out of 40 is 62.5. So that's like 62.5. So it's closer to 50%, but then maybe I flip it 400 times, and now I get like 207 heads, okay? And so 207 out of 40 or 400, that gets me 51, 51.75%. What's happening? The more times I increase my uh, times I flip the coin, the closer and closer I get to my 50%, okay? So over and over and over, the more times you do it, the closer and closer we head to uh, the true theoretical 50%, okay? So that's the idea of wall of large numbers. Empirical probability converges asymptotically as n goes to infinity. We're approaching this classical probability, okay? The last type is subjective. Subjective probability is just like it sounds, it's subjective. The results are from intuition, educated guesses, or estimates. So typically you hear something, you know, like from a doctor, okay? So classifying um, the following as uh, one of the three types of probability, okay? So a doctor feels that there's a 75% chance that the patient recovers. This isn't based off of empirical evidence. It's just, I got this gut feeling that they're going to probably be walking with a 75% chance. Okay. 
And so this is based off of intuition, this educated guess, okay? It's not based off of data. It's just based off of what someone in this profession believes to be true. This is subjective. All right. Now, the probability of winning a raffle where you buy one ticket and there are a hundred tickets total. So maybe you go, you play in bingo or whatever, and they've got, you know, when you walk in the door, they give you some tickets. And at the end of the night, they draw from this big old ticket raffle thing and they pull out your number. The probability that you get drawn, right, is like one out of a hundred because you have one ticket out of a hundred. Every ticket has an equal chance of being picked, hopefully, in your raffle, right? So nobody's, you know, it's not a rigged raffle where they already knew the winner before you ever did anything. So this would be an example of classical. Classical probability, each ticket has the same chance of happening. Now, this last one, based on previous counts, if I ever see based on previous counts, I'm automatically thinking empirical probability. The probability of salmon swimming up through a dam is 85%. So maybe they've studied this and they've studied the number of salmon that get through this dam and it's 85%, okay? This is empirical. It's based off of data, okay? The percentage 85% is based off of previous counts, all right? Now, it's different for a doctor. If a doctor says that they feel like you know, there's a 75% chance of recovery. That's subjective. But if the doctor says, you know, based off of the evidence, you know, I've performed this surgery a thousand times and 900 times it's been successful. And the doctor says there's a 90% chance you're going to succeed. That's based off of evidence, statistical evidence. That is empirical. That's how the real world works, okay? Um, they go through and they say, look, Historically, this surgery, um, you get one out of a out of five thousand or whatever that's not a good surgery. You know that's that's the accepted number. Um, so you know this happened one time to you in your career. You know we can we we're examining you at the board and we're saying okay, there's a pass. But then next week they do the same thing again, and then they do it again the next day. Then the board says, look, statistically, this should not be happening. You should not be killing this many people. And that's where, you know, they get on probation, they lose their license, but it's based off of statistical evidence, okay? How likely it is that you would actually have that many people um, dying under, under surgery or whatever, okay? So those are your three ideas for... Um, a probability. You've got the classical, you got the empirical, and then the least used here is the subjective. So typically what we're going to stick with in the classroom is the classical and the empirical.